Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Heath Bar. Hope things have been going well for you. It's been a few weeks, and uh, it's good to be back. Good to be bringing you another fine conversation on tap, getting ready to be served up to you here in just a minute. Before we get to that, though, I want to let you know where to find me this coming weekend. I will be at Santana's Sports Bar and Grill in the Deadwood Mountain Grand in Deadwood, South Dakota. Uh, playing there Friday and Saturday night starting at 9 o'clock. Going to be slinging some good tunes out there for you. i got a few new ones uh, I've been playing a lot lately and I've really been enjoying some covers, uh, some originals. And uh, so hope you guys can come out and check that out. You'll find me there both nights, Friday and Saturday. Also, Saturday, in the afternoon, Crow Peak Brewery is having their November party, their I Hate Winter party, or maybe it's just a winter party. I'm not too clear on the details there. But anyway, I'll be playing from 2 to 5 in the afternoon at Crow Peak Brewery here in Spearfish, South Dakota. So you can check me out there as well. So if you normally like to go to bed early, which I usually like to when I don't have a gig, come see me at Crow Peak, 2 to 5. Uh, if you're one of the night owls, the the party animals like I was 10 years ago, <laughs> see me at Santana's in Deadwood. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out already yet, uh, the website to find this podcast as well as all the previous podcasts and you know things I write my schedule uh, you know the Heath blog uh, books I'm reading everything to do with me really is up at heathbaronline.com I try to keep everything centralized there and updated as much as I can um, so go ahead and check that out. You can look back on past episodes, um, different things that have been going on. Uh, has links to my uh, social media feeds, uh, Facebook and Instagram. You can find me uh, at Heath Bar Online, and then on Twitter as well, um, which is just my name at Heath Johnson. I'm still really excited that somebody left that open or got rid of it or whatever, and I was able to grab it and didn't have to use some like birth year or a random thing. It's just my name, at Heath Johnson on Twitter. I don't have much more to say in the terms of announcements and things for you, just that I've moved. Um, uh, my, uh, my family and I, have, we've, we've gotten a bigger house and it's pretty awesome, which also gives me space to actually build a studio. So sometime in the next year or so, I will be building an actual Heath bar and we'll be having some, some chats on tap in a Heath bar. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, more information on that as it comes up. Like I said, it's going to be probably about a year or so. Uh, a lot of other things you got to get taken care of first. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. So uh, be prepared to hear some more things about that coming up in the future. Uh, let's see. I think that might be it. Which is awesome because this episode of the Heath Bar features two fantastic people. Um, yeah, I, I just can't just can't even get over how fun our conversation was. Uh, we talked about a lot of different things, a lot of music stuff, a lot of uh, you know personal stuff and just viewpoint stuff and everything like that. Uh, we dogged on social media a lot, which was kind of funny because I just promoted myself on social media. But let's face it, social media is is a bitch. It's kind of annoying and it's not a lot of fun to have to do. But in the world we live in, it's it's ne it's a necessary evil if you're going to be doing things like playing music and podcasting and trying to get yourself out there. Anyway, uh, my guests today here at the Heath Bar are two people that I am really glad that I have gotten the chance to know. Uh, Raina Wallace uh, is one of my guests, and I have first met her about a year ago uh, in Deadwood uh, at the Wild West Songwriters Festival, and she came back again this year, and we were able to chat and connect. We stayed in touch this past year, and so it was awesome to have her back and get a chance to finally sit down and talk with her and get a little bit of her story and um, stuff she's doing with music and kind of what got her into it and everything. And then uh, she had introduced me to uh, the second guy on the episode today, Jackson Holty, um, affectionately known as Jimmy Corn Hagaberg, um, for those of you that are familiar with him. Um, he is a uh, singer-songwriter out of Montana as well. I should have mentioned that. Both of them are from Montana. Uh, I call them Montana royalty, and I do so uh, proudly because I honestly believe that's what they are. They are fantastic people and fantastic songwriters. Uh, Jackson has been playing with his band, The Highway Patrol, uh, for quite a while now. They have an EP up on Spotify. I definitely recommend you check that out. I think there's like five or six songs on there. 
um, written by him, and they're all phenomenal. Um, absolutely phenomenal songwriter, great voice, great singer, great guitar player too. Man, he was he was down here at the Wild West Songwriters Festival playing some tunes, and just watching him kind of do some some shredding and some playing on that guitar was was pretty cool to see. Um, so yeah, I am pumped to bring both of these people. Uh, to you here at the Heath Bar. I'm really excited for you to get to hear their stories and get to know them a little bit more. Um, definitely check them out. Um, they are worth knowing and worth following because there's cool things coming down the pipeline with both of them. Um, so I will make sure that there are links to um, their, <laughs> their social media accounts um, in this uh, description of the podcast. Make sure you all can find out um, where they're going to be and everything like that uh, as well. And with that, I think the best thing I can do right now is just get into this conversation because it's a blast. I had fun talking with them. I'm glad we got to do it, all three of us together, and we didn't split it out. It, was, it just worked out perfectly. Um, Montana's got some killer, killer artists up there, and I was, feel really uh, grateful that I was able to sit down with two of them. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Heath Bar, give it up for Raina Wallace and Jackson Holty. Welcome to the Heath Bar, where the conversations are always on tap. All right, well, cheers, guys. Yeah. Welcome yeah. Thanks, man. to the Heath Bar. I'm glad you guys are both here. This is, this is going to be a good time. Um, Why are you sweating? Well, either? because I'm <laughs> in the presence of Montana royalty, it feels like. I mean, <laughs> if you ask huh. Daniel Kozil. Um, Daniel Kozil? Yeah, he's Montana royalty, not us. Right. It, but what you're saying is it depends who you ask. Yeah. I'll say that we're Montana royalty. Yeah, I how think. would one even determine who and who isn't Montana royalty? I don't know. Jackson and I like don't even have similar writing styles nor are we uh, dating, nor are we even that close of friends. Um, <laughs> right, oh, which feels like uh, needs to be clarified early yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> Jackson it's been and a I. Subject of a great deal. Of so, how long? When did you guys meet? Let's start there. How uh, did you? How did you? Because you told me about Jackson. Yeah, we met like a year and a half ago. Yeah, April of um, eighteen. My Quinn's, boyfriend introduced us. Yeah, okay. At Quinn's birthday party. And then it took a whole year of knowing Jackson and playing shows with Jackson and hanging out with Jackson before he finally had a full conversation with me. Right. It was, uh, yeah, it was a year. Apparently, but that was a good, that's a good mark, a year. Does it usually take you longer? Much longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is exclusive. But we're colleagues, so the we had like... The fact that you get to listen to a podcast with Jackson saying more than right. three words. We haven't is, even known each other. We've never met. Whoever you are. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Yeah. So a year, a whole year. You just, yeah. you, you played a lot of shows together that year. And you I just mean, like said, time, hey, sounds yeah, good. When, when we were in nice Bozeman. Nice again. Because yeah. even though we live four hours away from each other, uh, my drummer is his lead guitarist. Yeah, it's a pretty, um, it's in Montana, four hours is not prohibitive. Yeah. <laughs> like, we we're gig, in, we gig in Livingston all the time. In the vein of country. Right. He's like super polished, tight band bluesy just insanely good at guitar and then there's like my four piece it's like you know it sounds like we're gonna be banging on coffee cans <laughs> on the street you know like yeah or a little more gritty and uh that's funny i thought you guys knew each other longer okay this is gonna be great this is gonna <laughs> be a good, yeah. a not, good conversation not well, as many he's been staying at the place i'm staying with me right yeah and why so, you guys are down here yeah um did, um, Luckily, this morning I was hungover enough to be downright catatonic, so Jackson had some. Quiet I got some time. alone time. Yeah, that oh, was good. valuable. That was valuable. The uh, you get too much talking and too much people around you. You just kind of need to escape it for a while. Yeah, 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 definitely. And this has been really cool. I mean, I've enjoyed the talking. But yeah, are you from Montana originally? No, I actually grew up in uh, Minneapolis. Minnesota. Oh, no kidding. I okay. came came to Missoula for school in 2013. Gotcha. Which is so fun. Oh my god. Yeah, so Raina knows a story that is not true. <laughs> well, uh, some friends of ours are playing at Bozeman Hot Springs, which is a venue, and it's weird, but it's cool. Yeah. And this is prior to Jackson having ever had a conversation with right, me. Right, this is pre-conversation. Um, okay, so, so pre 
Jackson. This is Hawkins. like this, this is, is like PC. acquaintance relationship. This is PC, not before you not knew he BC. could not form AD. words with his mouth. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I heard it from or how I got it in my head, but I went out to him at the show and I was like, "Hey, you know, I heard this rumor about you, about how you got to Montana." He's like, "What?" I was like, yeah, I heard that like you were just driving out west and that your car broke down in Missoula and you just decided, decided to stay there and build a band. And he's like, what? That's, no. That never, that never happened. <laughs> but that's a story you Not have exact. to tell people. Now. No, I don't because you told him I'm off the hook. It was, it's a nice, it would be great if that were true. But I'm going to make that rumor. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. happened to someone, so it wouldn't be that right. out of, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm a fiction writer. People I can believe say that. What I want. Yeah. You should have just told me. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. I have a friend that rode a bicycle from California to North Carolina. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and he stopped in Colorado and stayed for four months. Really? <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> hang out here I, for I a like while. This. And he stayed yeah. for four months. This isn't so bad. <laughs> I mean, literally. Continued on. <laughs> I almost made it from New Hampshire to California in two days. Oh. Driving through the night, but we had to stop in Breckenridge and party. And of course, right. Breckenridge. Right. Well, we had friends there, cool. you know. Yeah. The year-rounders. Yeah. Yeah. The, the resort town kind of people. So your boyfriend heard he heard you or he knew you previously the thing or? is that How birthday party we were talking about i think i might have met quinn that night too oh at the birthday party i mean i knew of i think i'd seen the band i'd seen ty play in quinn's band but i think tyson invited me to quinn's birthday party and i met both of oh you oh my there. god i was such a fucking dick to you <laughs> oh it night. was all it was a hostile it was a bunch of punk kids oh, <laughs> oh geez, it was a man. punk birthday party okay. it was a hostile environment my oh. friend sydney's apartment in sydney is should have walked in wearing a bolo and just seen yeah. what they done. Man. Yeah, well, I might as well have. I sort of walked in in a pearl snap. And like, 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 who the fuck is this yeah. kid? Sydney's this princess that like moved to the city to be an actress, and uh-huh. her apartment looks exactly how you want an actress's apartment to look. Mm. Yeah. And she had tried to put up like hockey decorations for Quinn's birthday because she just knew that, that that's all she knew about him really was that he liked hockey. In punk rock. Had Sydney met Quinn? <laughs> I don't know. I Did, think so, anyone yeah, the, but like, she didn't know him well enough. That's a hell of a birthday and party. And so like, things are winding down, and there was some illicit substances. Yeah. <gasps> and, yeah. What? <laughs> I'm not trying to incriminate were... anyone. Uh, but I told Jackson, I was like, hey, I also have a country band. If you want to come play in Bozeman, like, I'd love to like be on a bill with you. He's like, yeah, well... Yeah, you should send me some of your stuff. And I was like, oh, oh you don't no. fucking believe me? <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe that I'm good enough? That's right. Really? I do remember that. Oh, and I was I like, qualifying who he's going to play I with. Was like, like, uh, I, I feel like that's, him. I felt so that's bad. Right. I do like, remember that. I mean, yeah. in his defense, he is at a punk rock birthday party. <laughs> and yeah. you walk up to him and say, I play in a country band. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I didn't feel it. Like, yeah. I, that's hilarious. I did, I'd not thought about that until you just told us to. I didn't feel like it was an unfair thing to ask. I, was just, I, I meant it to be like, yeah, if you send me tape. I would like to listen to them. Yeah, but yeah. it sounded like you had to prove whether yeah. or not I could open up. Well, we were a big so deal. Was like, it's not an easy thing to open in the back room at the VFW <laughs> on a Thursday <laughs> night. You know that is that's when you've arrived. Somebody's got to do Montana royalty. Yeah, is when you get to do right. that, and somebody's <laughs> got to do quality control. I almost and it's got to be me. Oh my man, VFW drink chip. And yeah, I'm you really got to go use that. that. I didn't. Do you I need to get close that. with Mike? Sorry. No, you're good. Okay, you're cool. Yeah, usually about a fist away. It's good enough. So you're set. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame him though. I feel like that's more of what took you guys a year to become friends, is because of that story right I'm there. Like you got pissed that he asked asshole. to hear your stuff first, and you're like, "I'm only gonna tell him. I I'm gonna be cordial it. for a year and yeah. make him earn my friendship." Right. So, so it might be your side. A, then he just right. he continuously into. crashed on our couch. That's right. The, the gravy train rolled through mm. last winter because these guys. Um, Bozeman Livingston's got a much better kind of a country scene than than Missoula does. So I was playing a lot of shows down there, and I had a I had a couch I could rely on. Sweet, it was a dream. How long have you been playing? Um, I've been playing guitar for twelve years now. Okay, which is kind of crazy even to say that out loud. But twelve years. Um, I've been I got to college and I played lead guitar for other people, mm-hmm. um, which I really enjoyed. And then after college, they all. All those bands kind of split up, and everybody went their separate ways, and it kind of fell to me like, if you want to keep doing this, you have, you know, sure. I have to be the one yeah. to make it happen. And so, um, I've been playing with my band now for almost a full two years. Wow, 
That's really cool. And th- tell me their name again. Uh, it, the band is Jackson Holty and the Highway Patrol. The Highway Patrol. That's cool. It's a good, it's a lot. It's a lot of name. It's not the best, but it is the most. Uh, the funniest thing about it is like posters for their shows. The venue never gets never it right. Never is it ever. So like I just told Jackson that he should have a t-shirt, like a merch idea of just like a list of all the variations of the, oh, his brilliant. name and the band right. name. Right, Jason it's Holton been like, it's been and like the Highwaymen. Yeah. Oh, they see the E at the end. Oh, like, it's oh, always definitely yeah. an yeah. N it's after always, that name. Yeah, it's never once been right. Jason Jared Holt. Jared Hotler and the, high, <laughs> the security guards. I don't know. Like, <laughs> shit, like It's just become a running joke now. Yeah. Just purposely that would be a great it's always, yeah. it's always wrong. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, that reminds me. Did you see the one uh, Jason Isbell had it a while ago? It's like, it's pronounced Isbell. And he had like the phonetic oh, I have, for his last I name. I haven't seen the t-shirt, but I love I love that he gets grumpy with people when they <laughs> oh, mispronounce his oh name. Oh my god! I had brilliant. to send Quinn a. It wasn't the post itself on Instagram. You know, it was a picture of Jason and his family. And someone in the comments, just a normal citizen, mm-hmm. said, "What a wonderful family you have!" And also, are you thinking about having another one? Like asking if he's going to have I another child. And he's like. Well, my grandfather had another family in Michigan, and it did not end well. (laughs) 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 Too funny. Yeah, I mean, people think that Jackson's an asshole all the time when really he's just painfully shy and awkward. So cripplingly shy, it's true. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. I kind of like, I almost like it when I see artists get aggravated because I like it when people, we told you were talking about Quinn, I like it when people are willing to stand up for like doing their own thing. And I saw this interview where, the guy introduced Jason Isabel, mm-hmm. and Isabel went, my name is Jason Isabel. And the interviewer said, well, is that your name or is that just your your southern accent? <laughs> and wow. Isabel, Isabel oh. was like, it's my damn name. Shots wow. fired. Yeah. So obviously I should start being grumpier about when people get my name wrong. Well, I'll even, just start being a diva about it and really You've been grumpy with hell. me all weekend because apparently when Jackson's alone, no one talks to him. But right. As soon as there's a girl around, but now him, everybody wants to hit on Raina. Talk to him. Yeah, and somehow I'm dragged down. I keep trying to send you off to sea on your own, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'll, tired. I'll just go. Bye guys. I'm just tired. Leave. Thanks for coming, Raina. We'll yeah. see you later. It's been it's been great. Yeah, just it's creepy great. creepy dudes coming up at the bar, and I. That's if my, I could bail, I would. Life. I want you to know that if you I could, es- I know it's true. It's been an education, and that would be the case, like regardless if you were a musician or anything like that. Like it's just. What you deal with. Yeah. Like, we've talked about that before. Or 50 before. pounds heavier. It doesn't matter. Guys don't care. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's true. It's, yeah, we don't. Yeah. And, <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I had know, a friend who said, no one beauty can, is a light switch away. And I'm like, dude, yeah. you can't, you can't say stuff No one like can that, see yeah. me because of the podcast, but I assure you that uh, I'm like, I, I make the cut, but not by much. I'll for beauty standards. Montana yourself, royalty. Give yourself yeah. some credit. For Montana. Right. Not for Montana, royalty I'm royalty, a but Montana royalty. I'm going to title this episode Montana royalty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the state of Montana, I am just beyond gorgeous, but then I stand <laughs> next to Kristen from Austin. Oh. You know who I'm God. talking about? From last year. Uh, no, she's no, here no, now. Her no, husband, true. Kevin. Austin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I stand next yeah. to her and I look like her little kid sister. Yeah, yeah Austin must be. Hi. I do not have the jawline to make it in Austin. <laughs> beautiful, no. beautiful people down there. I can't do it. I think you just have too many brain I'm cells. Just stay in here. Anyways, too, too many I'm brain 86 cells for from Austin. the entire city of Austin now, so. <laughs> she like, she like crosses the border, yeah. get out. Yeah, leave. <laughs> Waits 20 years, they're still saying, yeah. get out. <laughs> it is good, yeah. though. Like what you were saying, uh, like when artists kind of jump up and kind of get like that because it's especially when you get some someone as big as someone like that like like isbel because you forget people forget that they're fucking real people you know what i mean yeah. well, we were just talking about it. our favorite's definitely old old j mac yes well james yeah. mcmurtry oh god he's the man <laughs> he's so grumpy oh my god oh, i love, I it, love that yeah. guy somebody I, I haven't been to a show yet but i just want to go just to see something dumb happen, him to get pissed and walk off. Oh yeah, like totally done. No, he's that's that a James is worth Big the price show. of admission. I would pay whatever price it costs to see that happen. Hi, I'm Raina Wallace. This is the Nihilist Musician Podcast. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> good. I feel like you just started something. Yeah. it's gonna happen. Um, a buddy of mine was like, "Yeah, go up and 
talk to James about his dad. He loves that shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just sure that's yeah. what he wants to talk about. Definitely. <laughs> Is your dad that? Did he write that book? Yeah. He wrote that one book, right? Oh, Lonesome yeah. Pigeon. The one book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I finally got to see McMurtry last mm. summer, and he did exactly what you're describing. Somebody called a request, and he said, some of you know what you want to hear, but none of you know what you're going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was awesome. That's he was like, great. it's my job to write songs and write a set list and perform. Like, I'm a fucking professional. Yeah, been doing it a long I'm time. I'm not here to, like, play covers for you. Yep. yep. God, he's good, though, man. He's, he's, he's one of my all times. How do you, I don't know how you top him. Dude can write a song, man. Yeah, I, oh, what was this morning on Just Us Kids? It's oh, Hurricane God. Party, Ruby and Carlos, Fireline Road, three in a row. And it's like, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd kill a man to write any one of those yeah. songs. Yeah. We were talking about him yesterday, and I told Jackson, I was like, that's who Jackson and his band should be opening up for. Instead of having to learn all the mama tried to be, in order to be a bar band, like, that's who you, I think you should be James working with yeah old James James, James I, I'd Jack. like to speak to you directly now James <laughs> James if you're listening yeah. yeah no I endorse Jason Hotler <laughs> and the Highwaymen <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's good. Well, yeah, I'm gonna think of multiple names to call you tonight. In yeah, front of, and, just and from the microphone. Just confuse all just these Nashville folks. Who is that kid? I'll put all three names up in a round next year together, and it'll just be you showing up. Yes, there. I'll just play yeah. an hour. Switch I'll chairs. just move Switch chairs. chairs. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, then you could play like your singer songwriter stuff, and then your blues right, stuff, I and could then play your country different, stuff. Right. Ooh, different genres. There you go. That's even yeah, perfect. I'll confuse them. It's even better. I'll throw them for a loop. Uh, I was telling Jackson that the way I view him is like with his songwriting process and how professional you and your band really are i call them like like a cow dog when it comes to music just like so focused and like <laughs> meticulous about everything it's gonna go right so yeah right. some people For like call two that. hours every morning you just write yeah that's true. no kidding i mean not i i wish it were every morning but when i have the chance yeah i get it it has to be first thing in the morning it has to be before you ingest any other sure any outside it has to be like here's what i think that uh, that's cool yeah, I, I, it is really, the thing is that it's really enjoyable, and on the rare occasion, like today, where you can, like, sleep eight hours and then get up and make some coffee and sit and write mm -hmm. in the sunshine and, like, have a, fo you know, usually it's, like, scribbling notes somewhere and trying to get something down. Yeah. Having those focus periods at work is really gratifying. It's really nice. Well, it's funny to me, and funny, funny is not the right word, but just, it's interesting to hear different people's, like, writing regimen, like, how they do it. Um I don't know if I've ever had one. Like, I've, mornings, some of my earlier songs happen, like, I would be dreaming about something, I would wake up and I'd write it down before I forgot. And then mm -hmm. I would come, turn into something in that. But yeah. um, lately, it's it's been pretty dry just because I've been busy with a lot of other shit. You had a but baby. I had a little bit. I guess shouldn't say a lot of other shit. I had a little bit. I, my wife had a baby. Yeah. I was present <laughs> in the room. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, that's been good and all, but... Um, yeah, to, to get something like that where you have, hey, this is, like, to find out this is when I write better is this time of day or in this situation or anything like that. That's something not a lot of people take the time to figure out. Um, I feel like that's not Raina's style because I've heard your songs and they don't seem to come out of a, I woke up, had some coffee, and wrote a song. <laughs> well, this is what I mean. Like, Jackson and I are complete yeah, night and yeah. day opposite because usually... It I can just hear it in my head and something's telling me like this is the song and here's the melody and like I don't, I'm like I can't even play guitar that good to play that so then I have to learn how to play my own song and the words are already there and it just all pours out and sometimes it's not enough so then Quinn helps me or I can employ other friends like sure, Jackson but sure. usually it's just like a manic episode like exorcism where it just it's all of a sudden this is fucking there someone's trying to crawl out yeah. of your skin and if I don't like if I'm busy and I can't give it the time it needs like if I can't drop everything and yeah. Write it down real quick, or it never gets done. It just, it just won't. sits there. It's uh, if you don't give it the time, then it. I've will been guilty find a few else. times of like thinking of a really cool line and like, oh, I'll, there's no way I'm gonna forget that, and, and then I, I don't I, put it in my phone and yeah. write it down, and then yeah. 30 minutes later, I'm like, what the fuck was yeah, I saying? I you know, it's like it's gone. Yeah. I mean, and, there's also times when I am 
in my manic episodes and like I'll write something down that I think is just solid gold. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I read the, it later. The I'm next like, day. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, God. This says uh, eating yesterday's leftovers and tomorrow's cocaine. Like that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> oh like what God. the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. It's edgy, man. It yeah. sounds cool. Yeah. No one. No one needs no, to know what it means. You don't have to understand yeah. it. It doesn't have to make sense. No one knows what it means. Ugh, yeah. It's it's a crapshoot, but everybody does it, you know? I don't know. I mean, I've, I've known people that they don't turn them into songs, but most people I know, they've written something down at, at some point in their life, whether they've yeah. had emotions or feelings or poetry or whatever you want to call it. But um, we're just lucky enough to be able to turn them into tunes. Yeah. So, and I, mean, I need to clarify that... Um, it's not like like Jackson is so methodical and meticulous and and organized, whereas I just let these things come to me. But it also there's no telling when or where so it's going to happen. So you just hits whenever. Yeah. So it's like let's keep the mics could, rolling and see if uh, something happens <laughs> here. Right, huh? yeah. I could go Any six months now. without writing a song, and then all of a sudden I write five songs in one sure, month. And sure. It's just a weird. Because yeah. I'm not going to sit. You Have you ever to tried to just sit down and, hey, I'm going to write yeah, a song? Yeah, it sucked. I hated every <laughs> second of it. <laughs> I like the, you know, the exorcism, like speaking in tongues. Yeah, and, you're just getting something that just kind of hits you. And, yeah, I, I don't know. Have uh, mine, Like I said, mine, is, mine has been dry for a while, but when it was coming, it was, um, it was a, not either of those ways like i'd sit down with my guitar somewhere and just, nice in the middle medium yeah just, well uh, maybe i don't know but like i'll think of a cool line throughout the day and then i'll put it in my phone and then i'll like go back and sometime that week sit down for an hour or two and say hey let's see if anything if a melody comes out of this that i want to see to its end you know and um sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't it's i think most of the songs i played this weekend i think there's only a few that were written this year most of them are previous years yeah. that I've just been playing out a lot, you know, and yeah. people seem to dig them. But. Yeah. But it's such a war of attrition. Like, I mean, I don't feel like I ever finish a song. I don't feel like I'm a very particularly good songwriter. I don't feel like prolific. And yet somehow, like, then when I'm, you know, I have like a master set list for the band and all of a sudden you look back and you've got 25 tunes. Sure. You know, like, yeah. the, in fact, my band's about to go in to record and without even really realizing it, suddenly we have like, way more than an album's worth of material and we're all fighting about what to cut you know like um it's got to be a good place to be though versus yeah oh, way better than <laughs> way better than here's, frantically here's trying our to, third ep <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah it's it's a i don't know you just try to, yeah it, it sort of happens without without your real you know i don't feel like i've almost ever put a stamp on a song and say this one's done sure and i'm sending it to print um but i was then, talking to a guy that always said he goes he records his stuff and that's how it sounded then. He goes, when, and then when he plays it now, 20 years later, it's, it's totally different. different. Yeah. Because that's Mike? just the evolution of that song. Yeah. What's that? Are you talking about Mike? Uh, no, oh. Mike's probably thinks the same thing. I was talking about Steve Thorpe. Uh, oh, I don't okay. know if you've met him yet, but no. he's been playing around the hills for years. But well, is there anything like yeah. Mike? We'd love to meet him because Mike has been a highlight. Oh, Mike's great. This, oh, my God. He's, yeah, he's, he's so terrific. great. Yeah. He, uh, he pl- uh, did, did you hear what happened this morning? No. So he wakes up. <laughs> trips over the coffee table, falls over, rug burns his knee and elbow, and oh, he's so he's kind of limping to his to his round. And uh, the night text. How old is he, by the way? In case Mike's, listeners don't know. I would know. guess seventies. I would guess seventies. Yeah. I, I, I've never asked him. Um, I don't even know if he's seventy. He, he worked 60, in the maybe. oil he's got a white fields. Beard. Yeah. I mean, he's an yeah, old man. He worked in the oil fields for forty-five years. He's been playing since he was nine. Um, and I mean, I would guess he's got, and he and he's been he hasn't touched alcohol in twenty three years, and he stopped at forty eight. So yeah, he'd be in his late sixties or something. Yeah. Early, yeah. Some of these at the early at the oldest. But well, I mean, if he quit drinking for that long, he might be in his eighties. It's, it's, it's certainly <laughs> possible. It's certainly yeah, possible. Yeah. But then, so I text him like, "Hey, are you coming to the demo panel?" Because he wanted to do something. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I forgot." So then he hobbled over to here, and then they played his song and. I've never seen the that panel gush like that. It was it was co- kind of cool to see because I mean Mike's a great songwriter oh, yeah. and a great guy, and they were like, "This is 
Like, where the hell have you been, man? Like, oh, I've been in oil field 45 years. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's yeah. where the best people are at, you know? You, well, it's so funny, because yeah, Jackson and I were deal. talking about some of the songwriters around here and, you know, who I think is wonderful. And I think right. this person's wonderful. And I like this song. Yeah. And Jackson's like, I don't know. I don't really like songs without a story arc. You know, songs yeah. that just, like, kind of list off things. And then we heard Mike's song, uh, I Eat When I'm Hungry and I, yeah. I, cry, I cry When, when I'm, I'm Blue. blue. Yeah. And it was just, all the verses are, is just a list of Stuff things he that he could eat. potentially <laughs> eat from his cupboard. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, like, Jackson and I are just sobbing. Uh, like, it's a beautiful, yeah. like, old man song. It's like, so good. I yeah. could have a can of tomato soup or a grilled <laughs> cheese sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Pour a bowl of cereal. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He just goes on about all the different things he can eat and uh, it's it wonderful he's got it though he's got it. that yeah. just yeah. simple plain things the song he played today was um i think it starts if you see georgiana uh tell her i'm doing fine i don't miss those uh sausages and eggs in the morning these frozen ones are just they're just fine, <laughs> just fine. Like yeah, yeah it's like dude that's my heart yeah. brilliant yeah. <laughs> you know? it hurts he's got yeah. it man I'm he's crying. got it that's so he's good, got man. it uh i mean do you guys think songwriting is uh, a, a talent or something that's developed or I mean obviously you can develop something from start to finish but you think you've got to have some kind of spark initially to even get going I think a desire to do it um, I find myself constantly apologizing to my partner for just being as insane as I am and he's like well I don't think you could write as well as you do if you weren't it's like some sort of crazy, That's you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, at some point your music reflects, the music reflects the songwriter. You I mean, know? you gotta be crazy to want to go after it. Yeah. I feel like once I stopped taking it so seriously and just realized that I have everything I want and that I'm having fun just doing whatever, yeah. that like I started to write better songs. Mm. Just la lack of stress? Yeah, to flow like, easier. and then I stopped holding yeah. myself up to a standard too, like that stupid song I wrote and played, the Big Empty House one. Yeah. Everyone, like, I never yeah. played that in front of a crowd, and everyone fucking loved everybody it. Everybody loves that song. That's a and good then, like, tune. I heard people in the crowd go, aww, because oh, it's were... kind of a sad song. So then I started crying. I and I was like, <laughs> like yeah. it's a stupid song, but. It's not a, it, I don't know. I mean, if I were to judge myself and, like, just, like, it's have a vetting process, that yeah. wouldn't make the cut. Well, yeah. it doesn't, like, that, it doesn't fit with. The, your normal writing or your normal song like that, but it's definitely you like 100% that's a Raina Wallace song I'm just song. burning couches and ripping yes, pages I mean, that out of line alone is like oh Raina wrote that song yeah. you know what I mean yeah. what about you what do you think as far as like um, is there like whether, a spark whether or? songwriting is a skill or I, I mean I know it's it's definitely a skill it's sure. definitely something that can be developed but do you think yeah. that there's a, initially like because a lot of people get interested in songwriting and then you, 10, 15 years later, you can still, like, it's, you just don't, you can't do it. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I, mm, I don't feel like I can do it or, like, if I have any particular aptitude for it. I feel very much like I'm swimming upstream, you know, like, which is why I'm, you know, shuffling notes around for, like, two hours in the morning. Mm. Um, uh, I don't think it's, I feel like it's more... People get wrapped up in the idea of like whether or not you have a gift or a talent or mm -hmm. whether you can do it. I think it, it's more about who's willing to do it. Like, I have, I feel like people are really adaptable. They adjust to the circumstances they're in. I very intentionally put myself in the circumstance of being a band leader and a songwriter mm -hmm. and playing gigs out. And then I knew I had to have material. And I was willing, like, I'm not going to go out and play bad songs. You, sure. mean, you mean you don't want to play Mama Tried at every single set? Not ev Only 90% is good for me is a good, 90, is a good Mama Tried <laughs> ratio if we can hit it, you know, like 85, 90% yeah. of the nights. And so that's all, I mean. Tell them to like, request I, I, another Merle song. Like, that's the only one everyone knows. But. Right. Um, so, so I actually I, uh, bought your new daughter a onesie, and I forgot it. It didn't come in quick enough from online but it says mama tribe oh sweet that's awesome i'll um, give you my address yes i'll send it <laughs> yeah, that's terrific so i uh, yeah i feel like you can't anybody can do it like it, it's not like a secret mm -hmm. you should have a couple of verses and a chorus <laughs> right you verse, know chorus, and they should kind of rhyme chorus. like it's there it's there to be done if you're willing to stick with it until mm -hmm. it's done 
is that I feel like it. I heard I heard an interview with Guy Clark years ago where he was like. Now I've started telling the story. I don't remember this. Is this funk effectively the same. I'm just repeating what Guy Clark said. And, sure. And yeah. Like, there's no there's no mystery. There's no class. There's no secrets. You know, you know what you like. And I think as long as you don't try to be anything other than yourself. Sure. Right. I mean, what what did I say to that guy last night? Oh, we were in the smoking lounge. It's basically just kind of a shed attached to this <laughs> hotel. <laughs> And, uh, unfinished room South Dakota this, yeah. this guy comes up to us and talks to us and again Jackson's like why the fuck am I hanging out with her people just talk to me now and I don't like it would that guy have come up to my hairy ass yeah. and hit on me no yeah you got to, you got to just drink in peace man yeah. Just right. yeah. leave me alone let right. me have my beer that's what I'm saying Rain is really bringing me down he really needed to talk to yeah, someone yeah he had stuff to say oh. and he is an actor and he oh. has done some pretty big acting gigs. Ooh. And he really wanted to talk about being Tell an actor. All about them, yes. And so finally I told him, I was like, well, you know, usually if you're an introvert with crippling self-doubt, you're a visual artist. And when you thrive on attention and have overwhelming narcissism, you're an actor. <laughs> and when you're somewhere in between, you're a musician. And I was expecting like that to... You know, kind of as like a fuck off. Yeah. He's like, uh, of course I'm a narcissist. I was like, oh, oh please. That played, went the wrong way. Right, that yeah. went the wrong way. You played right into his hands there. Yeah. Where's the reverse on this train? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or like, should I tell about last night? What, what part of last night? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, there's a singer songwriter here. I'm not going to name names. No. Because he's been so sweet to us and uh, just a nice kid. He's a kid, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like us. And, uh, but he does the whole country rap thing. And so last night he was trying to hang out with us. I was like, hey, you know you just write rap songs for people who are scared of black people, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was so ready for, like, a reaction out of him. And he just looks at me and goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, now I'm like, the like, asshole. Right. He's completely sad about it. He goes, yeah. Yeah, but it, it pays my bills yeah. and I hate myself right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I felt so bad because I was oh. like just drunk and ready for a fucking fight. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah, I know. I, I've, uh, as I've, as I've grown up, I've learned to try not to assume I have somebody figure out, even if I've known him for years. Because yeah. it's like every... We're going to hang out with him tonight and it's going to be fun and I like yeah. him and... I got a buddy last night that going through a rough patch and he got he got pretty toasted and he oh, said and did some stuff incident. and it's like dude mm. and it's definitely not who he is he's just he's having a bad fucking weekend you know yeah. what i mean yeah. but it happens and it is what it is yeah i heard uh i, I kind of followed joe's Pug, joe pug's songwriter podcast and i finally heard the one that he did when his new album came out and he talked about uh anybody who's any musician who's been doing it more than 10 years is doing something they care about. Like, yeah. no one does the, you, like, yeah, you this. Don't is, do this is so much <laughs> fucking torture that goes into this. Like, no matter if, you know, the Wiggles have been at it for 10 years <laughs> and say what you will about the Wiggles, they fucking love making children's music. Like, they believe in what they're doing. Yeah. And there's a sort of, Joe Pug didn't make fun of the Wiggles. Right. I made fun of the Wiggles. Right, right. That's beside the point. Yeah, and so that's a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but I mean, you have to give people... I just had to explain do. to someone today when they're like, why aren't you pursuing this more? Why, like, well, how come you don't play here more? Or why aren't you moving mm. to Nashville or getting your songs out there? Why didn't you bring a demo or all this yeah. shit? And I was like, well, one, because like, I'm already happy. Yeah. Two, because if I took this seriously, I would have fucking killed myself <laughs> yeah. right now. Like, I can't, I can't deal yeah. with the heartbreak of being a musician, just constantly yeah. having venues not pay you the amount that they said they were going to pay you. Uh, uh, people that are higher up in the industry say that they're going to listen to your demo, and then they obviously don't. Right, like, right. If I took this seriously, I would be dead. Yeah. It, well, it adds, it adds too much to what you're trying to do that you can't really be creative anymore yeah because you're trying to Uphold do a b and c standards. instead of yeah. get something out of you that's authentic yeah. and genuine you know what i mean yeah booking and promoting and logistics are not songwriting you know oh, i've it, gotten so and it's easy to ugh, i can't do it anymore like yeah. i i've had i'm almost at the point where it's like i've been doing i've been playing for yeah 10 years so yeah. 
clearly I must enjoy it. You know, I haven't stopped yet. Right. And you're amazing at it. But I'm well. I know where I know where I thrive at. That's that's and I think that's, that's a lot yeah. of the key is I'm not yeah. trying to be someone I'm not. Like I'm not sending my stuff down to Nashville. I'm not sending my stuff to a demo thing. It's like I know I know what they're looking for, and it's, it's not, not what us. I'm doing, and that's fine with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the same time, like I want to make sure that before I die, what I've written is recorded, yeah. and so that my at least my family will have the stuff that I wrote while I was here on this earth for them to share yeah. and pass down, you know? And, right. and, and that's really kind of what it is and where it's at. You know, I wrote one song four years ago that won me a guitar. That's probably the highlight. Yeah, that's the highlight. Of where yeah. my music <laughs> career is at, you know? Yeah. And that's fine, you know? Yeah. I love that guitar. It's yeah. great. But, and, but so many people, they, like, something like that happens and they're like, oh, now I got to, push, push, push this song because I won something. And then they, before you know it, they haven't written something in, in years or months yeah. and they just lost why they got into it for in yeah. the first place. Well, that's like my favorite thing is people who aren't musicians always tell me, they go, well, you just need to be in the right place at the right time and the right <laughs> person's going to hear you and say she needs to be famous, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to go into any... You know, anecdotes, tangents to um, uphold this Introduce statement. Yourself. I'm about hey, to I'm what you're looking but, for. But Heath, <laughs> Keith yeah. knows because uh, he's heard some of the stories. Being in the right place at the right time and meeting the right people is literally what I'm best at. Yeah, you're pretty good at that. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of shocking actually. And I've only known you for a year. Um, Actually, we haven't really talked at all this year either. So I'm kind of in in your same boat. We talked when I first met her, and then right. like now yeah, again a year later. You're so. at that threshold. Uh, yeah. That's literally what I've messed yeah. at. But the people who actually make things happen are not at festivals or parties. They're in a room smoking cigars and yeah, they're uh, not they're not out scouting and looking anymore. Yeah. They've they've done that route or whatever the case may be. They're just that's someone else's like job. It's weird right, living like you know, in Montana in just constantly meeting all my favorite musicians and they're all just people yep. and they can't do anything for you and that's right. fine yeah living in we two bedrooms. share houses. whatever drugs i have and then they go on their way <laughs> and you know tylenol ibuprofen you yeah. know those types yeah. getting crazy <laughs> um, yeah and that i yeah actually to be fair though i uh i also work for a carriage company on the side sometimes like draft horses like no drive, kidding yeah so you know, you might think that sex and cocaine sells, but it does not. Nothing. It doesn't sell nearly as much as horses do. Mm. Like you offer someone a carriage ride, and they're like, "Oh, fuck yeah, I'm gonna take that." You know what I mean? Like <laughs> not saying no to that. Oh, yeah, I get to pet horses. That's dope as fuck. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, do you? So, when was your first song? When did? How old were you? Do you remember? Like, I've been scribbling in, in notebooks uh, forever. I don't. It, I I wrote as long as I played. I understood that you. It just seemed like part of the deal. Like you're supposed to write your own songs. Gotcha. It did not occur to me that there might be like a craft to it. I just assumed that if I said what I thought, it would be a big hit, because I was 14 and a cute kid and like <laughs> oh, people would love it. His car broke down somewhere in Montana. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Stuck around. It was college. Feels like a watershed for me. Uh, the last couple of years of college, because I, I met some kids who, who I was in bands with, and they were writing at a, like, astonishingly higher level than I was, mm -hmm. and that was when I began to like, analyze and like break down and like, sure, like actually try to make a song that was good, that was actually moving up until it was a very self gratifying project. I mean, I wrote tons of songs, but that feels like. 2021 was yeah. when I started like producing material that was listenable. <laughs> sure. What about you? Um, I guess I started playing guitar when I was like 14 or 15. Okay. Uh, my parents were too poor for a while for me to like get into video games. So when they finally <laughs> did like accumulate some money, I got a guitar for Christmas and okay, like oh she's she likes this. Yeah. Go sit in your room for 12 hours <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> get lost yeah and then uh so i was just like learning all the covers and i tried writing and then my dad would be like yeah it's so good i'm like no but thank you yeah thanks thanks dad uh, yeah <laughs> and then yeah i moved to a college town 
I'd already dropped out of college at this point to be a musician with literally zero songs written <laughs> <laughs> and like minimal, you know, knowledge of theory or anything. And so then I moved to Chico, California, which is like one of the biggest college party towns on the face of the earth. Yeah. And so then uh, a friend of mine, he was part of the School of the Arts there, and they put on like a songwriter showcase every year. He was like, you should do it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'd love to. And then I was like, fuck, I don't know my songs. <laughs> so like, I just like wrote one the night before, and I still play it to this day. Which one is it? Window shopping. That's That was the first one? Yeah, the I was good 19. Freaking night. Yeah, good lord. Get and, out of uh, here. Come on. I mean, I'll, obviously I'm a procrastinator because I work well under pressure, which is might be the only thing you and I have in common, Jackson, <laughs> um, besides just being amazingly good looking. Right, that's yeah. your two well, things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why I had you both up here together. Yeah. We're alone, folks. Yeah, we have the faces <laughs> for radio. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just like wrote that song the night before, and I they like picked ten artists to do like a recording session of that song, and I didn't make it. Mm. And then like a week later, they're like, "Hey, someone we picked backed out. Do you want to do it?" And I was like, "I mean, no, because fuck you." But like, yeah, I will. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and so now I still play that song that I wrote when I was nineteen. Still to this wow, day. that's cool. I think that's the first song I heard from you. Yeah. Um, it's fine. It's, yeah. a it's a great tune. Spooky. Yeah, it's got that. I don't know. You're it's going got hell that. Vibe. Yeah, yeah. It, that. It was just also what I'm best at is just. I don't know what the word is. Um, I feel like people use the word angst a lot with your music, and that probably is an over over assumption because it's not just that at all. Like there's there's a lot uh, there's a lot of like more screen, depth to it. Yeah, you know. I, I don't know. I'm done being like I. It's really nice playing with Lacey Nelson, mm -hmm. who is just phenomenal. She's got oh, this she's amazing great, yeah. voice, and yep. she's gorgeous, and she's a real cowgirl, and her songs are fabulous. Yeah. And then she wrote a song about me that I never heard until today during the round with her. Oh, she told me she wrote it. Yeah. I haven't I told like, her yet. I'm going to play it. Was it a, I didn't get to hear it. Was it was amazing. Oh, I got to have her play it. It was so beautiful and poetic and eloquent and just like a total banger. Oh, sweet. Um, long story short, it's about how I'm crazy and different <laughs> but it's it's a wonderful song and um it's nice to be able to play with because i get lumped in the you know either other country artists or or female artists mm -hmm. and i'm so tired of like girls being sad uh, i'm yeah. done being sad yeah i am angry <laughs> i am livid yeah <laughs> like be it's okay yeah be angry yeah i was talking to someone they said when when a girl gets angry, it's they can't just be angry like, oh, he's just he's just pissed, you know, leave him alone. Right. It's oh, she's a bitch. Right. You know and what I mean? Like right it, they it. can't have that genuine human emotion yeah. because that's not not allowed for some, or it's yeah. just looked at differently or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah, like playing with Lacey is really nice because yeah. she's just all encompassing. Yeah, she's a very well rounded you know, songwriter, oh and all God. of her songs like. They're all over the place. You know, they're not just yeah. one sad emotion or anything like that, you know. Yeah, it's, Lacey it's Nelson, 2020, I'm Raina Wallace, <laughs> and I approve this message. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, did, so when you, when you start a song, like those voices are talking in your head, it's trying to crawl out of your skin, is it something that, like you were talking, you've got to finish right away? Not always. Okay. Sometimes it's just like a general idea or melody that I have to like put out and then... Um, Let it simmer on the stove a bit. And yeah, because sometimes I'll look at it later and be like, this is eating less yesterday's leftovers mm. and tomorrow's cocaine. Like, yeah. that's not a real thing. Don't yeah. <laughs> don't manifest this. Like, let's not bring that monster into You're the You're trying world. to be a little bit too clever and um, now it's not working. The way I've kind of rationalized it, there's a book called Big Magic... It's by the woman that wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, okay. Which I have I not read, I and read, I haven't yeah. seen the movie. I, I, I they made a movie? I think I'm, so. I don't pay I'm attention to the game yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My aunt gave me this book, and okay. it's about the okay. creative process. It makes sense what you say it came from your aunt. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was like, the way she kind of explained it in there is similar to how I feel about it. Where, like, these creative ideas are their own entities. 
but they mm. need you to help manifest them. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't give them the time, you know, to help them become something, they'll go to someone else. So like that's when like dual discovery co- or like when you start writing a song that you don't finish and then two years later you hear it on the radio like or something similar on the yeah. radio and you're like you know what I mean that was my fucking song that I was gonna write and then I never got around to it and someone else wrote something so eerily similar like if you ignore it long enough it just moves on yeah it has to find someone else to make it happen that's an interesting way to look at it I what do you think about that I think that's nonsense <laughs> Night and day. <laughs> Night and day. This is great. Coming to, Not to NBC, be the right new on. sitcom. I mean, right I've Hunter. never given. I haven't given it that that much thought to make an opinion on it. So it, this is first I'm hearing. I think it's it. a. I think it's a finite. Not to. I don't mean to be argumentative about it. No, it's but fine. Since you asked, I, I think it's a finite. Like the parameters are relatively tight, and we're all kind of trying to rhyme the same words about the same things and so many inevitably the there's so many right yeah the, there's only so many phonetic sounds and there's millions of people sitting in basements across the country writing songs and and stuff overlaps i feel like that's normal and it's it's like we're like it's like spirituality and science right now it's like no this is just how things work you know there's only so many things to use and it's, th- it's that whole conversation just yeah. in a, a songwriting But it's funny because we idolize the same songwriters. Some, yeah, like a lot like of who, definitely who, like a bunch of the who you guys yeah. Who do you idolize? Let's talk about that for a bit. Well, like, I mean, the greats. In- inspiration you know. for you guys. And there's the you obvious wanna, ones. Start? Yeah, start. I mean, obviously, Towns Van Zandt. Yeah, yeah. You know, just the obvious baseline without getting any deeper. But this is, this is if we want to roll with this, I, think, I always think it's interesting how, like, I mean, Towns is the guy for me, too, like, when I write. I aspire to write like towns, mm-hmm. and uh, I think Isbel is a really big character in the sure. contemporary scene. Um, but I wasn't actually there. Actually, the, the Isbel show in Missoula the last fall, 2018. Um, my friend Ian came with Quinn and Ty and mm-hmm. like a bunch of our mutual friends, and I saw him afterwards, and he was like, "It was really interesting because we were at an Isbel show, and with a bunch of people who liked Isbel for really different reasons." than you and I do. Like, it's it's funny how much you could pull out. Like, we were talking about Towns yesterday, and you were like, well, the crazy thing about Towns is that he would grind up heroin and mix it with vodka and drink it. <laughs> and that's so I mean, probably, not, <laughs> probably not, but which, like... Which, I don't mean to be trite about it, but whereas I'm like, I like Towns because on stage he would tell jokes that weren't funny, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What's white and crawls up your leg? Uncle Ben's perverted rice, <laughs> and, and it just totally kills. It like falls flat in the right, room, right. and that's not. That's like an extreme. I'm sure we have common ground as far as well, towns so I too. Think but that it's so funny that we both love towns and Jason Isbell. I think that your writing process is probably more similar to Jason's, and mine is probably extremely similar to towns. Very, we're like I think, you yeah. just can't turn it off sometimes. Mm. And like he had head injury to the point where like he couldn't even remember his own songs when he'd play them live, so he'd have to write them on his guitar yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, like that's my kind of crazy. And yeah, it was like methodical, right. just but we, we, transcendental, descriptive writing. Right, but I feel like that's I feel like that that's a lot of like a lot of what I did today. That sort of very visual uh, stuff is very derivative of towns. I was I always liked and Towns' songs, like my songs, I think Towns. Uh, he had this sort of. First of all, he lived in his head, mm-hmm. and there's a very you know, there's never just a story. It's always like, <laughs> yeah, everything is not enough and nothing is too much to bear. And it's always like very <laughs> <Yeah>. lofty, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and there's, uh, I don't know, there's something really kind of humble and personal about towns that I really like. I love on the old quarter when he's like, he goes, oh, thanks. I've never heard it that quiet in here before. You know, like those are the little yeah. pieces of towns that really get me when, is when he's, but I, I don't know. I feel like this is, it's, I feel like it's the flip side of the same coin. So I got, I, I've been a fan of towns for years and it wasn't until I think three or four years ago, three years ago, I think that I, um, started like well who, you know who would, who did he hang out with who did he listen to and stuff you know and that's when i found out about blaze foley oh, yeah. yeah that uh, that guy literally blew my mind yeah. he's incredible the way he writes and the way he puts things together like that guy yeah is hands down my favorite songwriter 
And yeah. I've got, I mean, when it comes, like, and I've had, like, Willie Nelson's my all-time favorite. I love Willie. I always have my dad. I grew up with him, you know, just Willie Nelson, redheaded stranger. It's a story about a preacher whose wife leaves him, and he becomes a killer. Right. Why wouldn't that. I like a story like that? You know yeah. what I mean? You know, <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't necessarily write that, yeah. but like, but he related to it and loved it yeah, so much. That yeah. album yeah. just introduced me to Willie, and that got me into, into you know the rest of his stuff. But John Prine was the other one who's like up there is like God level songwriting. Like yeah. The dude just yeah. can blow him out. But and I heard Blaze, I went, this is on a whole different other level yeah, for me. Like just what in the world? How uh, how it's just oh god. There's something that I really like. We I mean we were talking about how the business end of music becomes distracting from the actual music. Mm-hmm. There's something I find really genuine and endearing about um, Towns and Blaze and some of these characters that we know. In that I mean Blaze, like, had no interest in the business. You know. Yeah. I mean Town, none at all. Towns never made a dime. You yep. know. Uh, like didn't care. This uh, sort of. To an extreme extent. Do you think they'd have had Instagram accounts and like promoted I'd, their I'd shows? Ki- I know. I rack my. I, we like. <laughs> my band has merch this summer for the first time, and I'm um, like, oh god, record, are we selling I out? Want, <laughs> I want the record to show that uh, Jackson had a flip phone up until two weeks ago. Well, it's not been long. Yeah. Wow. It's been a, nice it's, work, man. Yeah, it's weird. It's. I mean, it's. Like changing my life. Things are different now that I have a smartphone. He would get so angry when you sent him picture, picture messages I or I don't included him. him in a group chat. He would be group chats were torture. Oh me. my yeah. gosh! It was just constant bling bling. Oh yeah, just... and they yeah. I don't know why the flip phone couldn't. It would come up just all like pound sign at sign exclamation mark. Like I, uh, it would get scrambled somehow emojis. in the encryption. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I I wonder that because that's the thing. Like lately, I just I can't. I don't want to give the time anymore to promote when I'm playing. Yeah, like it's, I'm, it's I'm just weird. I'm gonna book some gigs. Um, Wait, why do you think I became a bass player? <laughs> right, that's <laughs> someone else's job. Yeah, but hopefully the venue promotes it enough, and hopefully people show up. You know, or stumble yeah. upon me in that. Because one, you play around an area this small long enough, all of your friends they're not coming to every gig right. anymore because they've heard you yeah. over not, and yeah. you, and you're not expecting them to come to your gigs. Like, no, I'm not. Just bringing my friends along every weekend. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, not no, happen. that doesn't last. So then, yeah. who am I sending this Instagram out to? Yeah, it's just me. my friends who are you know the people that follow yeah, me. Yeah, but so. the best part about it is when you stop playing shows, they always ask you every time they see you when's your next show, yep. oh, even though play. they're not going to come. Right. Like right. I had to explain that to people this summer because I took the whole summer <laughs> off, and they're like. How come you haven't been playing any gigs? When's your next gig? I was like, I wanted to go camping. Just yeah. one fucking <laughs> yeah. day this summer, yeah. I wanted to go camping yep. and go fishing yep. and maintain my day job and my relationship and not just watch it all implode because every <laughs> fucking weekend I have to go sing songs for people who don't give a shit. Right. So <laughs> I just stopped. Like I, I just can't. I, I, like I'll book them and I'll play, but I'm not doing the promoting well and on top of that i'm an idiot and i and not an idiot but I, I feel like it's done done a lot of good stuff but then i you know do all the promotion stuff for the songwriters group and now i started this podcast which i also have to promote that too so it's mm-hmm. like god and you know none of that makes me any money it's just right. stuff i enjoy doing yeah. but i enjoy doing this Wait. not the i gotta think of a really killer instagram post yeah, yeah. and then plan it at the perfect time when it, most people are gonna play see the it. algorithm yeah and people get numb to that after a while oh, I it's like, I mean, the way it seems like it's working now is just you have to tour relentlessly yeah and that's so hard to do if you have like a four-piece band to oh, find yeah, people expensive. that will want to spend that much time in a van or three yeah. kids yeah yeah. This guy. That guy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just touring relentlessly. And then the best part about touring that I enjoy is that like I didn't even take I took barely any merch on my last tour. I didn't even take CDs. You <laughs> just went. I just went because it was fun and you yeah. got, you made some money, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You get to see all your friends around the country and when you're on tour as a musician and go to a new town, someone else's town they think that you're doing way better than you actually oh, yeah. are just yeah. because you're traveling and doing it. Right. When what's, really like, yeah. what's the old uh the old uh this is my this is my preacher coming out of me, the old saying from the Bible, no prophet is accepted in their own town. It's that uh, ancient saying of yeah. if people know you 
Pastor you're not, Lee, you then? can't be the son of God if people yeah. wiped your diapers and yeah. saw you, you know, eat food when you were three. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Totally. It's the same thing as a musician. Like, if people have known you since you were 12, yeah. you're always They know you're not cool. Yeah. No. They're, like, you're not cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm not cool. You go two hours down the road. Why do you think Jackson and I move from, like, very far away right. places? <laughs> uh, you think, I'm, you I'm think, from Northern California, for the record. Yeah. yeah. You think Jason Isbell's friends think he's cool? No. No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> But that, uh, yeah, and he doesn't. He doesn't seem to care, which is good. He's he's kind of yeah. got it. Yeah, I was like, ah, this, like, yeah. I was reading an article that him and his wife just still walk to the grocery store in the neighborhood. Yeah, and, I've come to appreciate like, no, that. I heard it's an great. interview with them. I think it was back in like 2015, maybe 2014. Um, it was a radio interview, and like Amanda Shires was still going to school. Still yeah, go she to was college like getting a poetry. master's degree. Yeah, like, yeah. just because yeah. like going to school. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'll I'll just go fuck myself. Like, I ain't doing (laughs) shit. (laughs) You're hanging out in Montana driving horses. Yeah. Uh, Painting houses. It's something else. Do you you think you could ever stop? Like, do you think songwriting and musician life is something that has an end date for you, for you, either of you? I mean, I've just found a way to party for the rest of my life. That's, so that's I'm not kind of what it is anytime so. soon. Yeah. The evidence would seem to suggest that I'm not going to stop doing this. Yeah. Jackson's a cow dog. Yeah. He's yeah. not going to stop. It's a it's a weird. I'm I'm sure there'll come a day where uh I heard this interview with John Prine where he just this is a podcast where I just recite interviews from other podcasts. This works for this me, is man. What's gonna happen? That's great. Where his wife was like, "Isn't it time for you to make another record?" And he was, "I just put out another record." And it turns out his last record was like 15 years ago. <laughs> like it's it's easier than it's very easy to not work, and time goes by. And I'm sure right. they'll I'm sure they'll come a point where I'm not. I mean, the goal is to be happy. So if you're already happy, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, but I also feel. I mean, I feel like constantly. I'm like, why? Why are we doing that? Like, no, you know, if we quit no doing knows. this, no one would care. But I, I'm not that much fun to hang out with. Like, <laughs> I'd rather be playing a show. Like, you, most weekends, it's like, like, if you go out and you say, like, hey, I don't have to, your game <laughs> I can be stage. up on stage and do my own thing and I don't have to hang out at That's the, the bar. That's the thing, yeah, no right. one talks to you I'm when you're on awkward. stage. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be at the bar listening to some shitty house band. Like, I'd rather, I'm such a task. You may be right about the cow dog. I gotta, I gotta have, I'm having more fun if I have something to do. Sure. So to sure. be like, I gotta be at the bar at six to sound check. Yeah. We go on at eight. Yeah. We play till midnight. That gives me like, I need structure. Do you ever see it not being that, not being fun? Where it's like, okay, like if it stops being fun at some point, like okay, this is something I gotta cut out now. Fun is. Uh, Oh, not, yeah, f- maybe not fun. fun yeah, fun is fun <laughs> feels like no longer the right. It definitely. Um, I was happy. Much, I was maybe. much more. Yeah, optimistic. it's funny how those things yeah. aren't always. Yeah, the they're same. not the same. So yeah. if it ever, you ever find yourself, hey, I'm now this is this is a cast twenty two because when you're unhappy, sometimes you write some really killer songs. Yeah. Right. You know, right. um, <laughs> I was very optimistic even a year ago when you met me. I was way more optimistic about doing music yeah. than I am now, but now that I don't take it seriously. I can have more fun with sure, it. Sure. And apparently people think the songs I write now are better and now I have an actual band that I that is a hundred percent how I want it to be and you know, we have the chemistry and yeah. and I get to hang out with other friends and um it's not really fun sometimes. You know. Um but I've just been doing it. It's been the goal for so long that I came to the realization that I don't know what I'd do if I didn't do this. Well, and the other thing is, like, you've got, like, when you when you start playing, it doesn't matter who's around. They're gonna, that's not something I've, I've I hear all the time. Like, just even the way you sing, like your your the way your voice is, it's like that's it stands out. You know what I mean? So there's that kind of thing where it's like doesn't you can take it serious or not. Like people are gonna recognize that's that it's something different than what's crammed down our throats 
You know what well, I mean? If women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you oh handy. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. He came to Rapid City. I didn't get to see him. I was. I was working. I had a gig. That's what you it was. Up. I had a gig. You had a gig. So, so you couldn't go do the fun things that you wanted to do. And I missed Red Green. See, that's, this podcast is solely to to deter problem. anyone from ever being a musician. <laughs> right. This, this, a, this podcast has been many things so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I don't. I don't know. What like, about you, I, Jackson? I keep finding myself like. I don't think I'll ever stop. I think I'm going to go through some valleys where it's like, hey, it's going to sit yeah. dormant for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, I just see it happening, you know, and life gets busy and kids got things they got to do and, you know, and that. And it's like, well, you got to, you know, if I fail at being a parent, you know, then it doesn't matter what else I do. You know, I yeah. suck, you know. All right. Yeah. Probably a priority. <laughs> I mean, maybe. You know. I know your kids are great. They they do, but they do all right. They do. All right. Your wife is great. And yeah, she helps. She helps most of the time with all of that. It's that's kind of all on her. But um, what about you? Yeah, do you uh, thoughts on that? Whether it's still fun or not, or well, whether if like it ever became, I don't know, if you ever got to. Do you see yourself? Maybe not. Obviously, you can't look into the future. But if you ever found yourself in a situation where you're no longer happy with it, like just walking away. It's hard to say. I feel like, I don't know, I don't feel like I, hmm. I, I can't answer that question. There's yeah, just maybe no, it's I just mean, too early. It, in, in it's so easy, you want to call it's it. so easy for me to now be like, no, this is, I never chose to be a songwriter. Songwriting <laughs> chose me, and this is my destiny, and I'm going to do this. It's like, yeah. that's, I'm in a, like... you just I'm, done it for so long. What I'm manically obsessive. I'm 25 years old. I'm single and unattached. I'm chasing this just as hard as I can. Yeah. But it's very easy for me to chase it right now. And, sure, sure. You know, stuff, I was the same way about high school football 10 years ago. Nah, gotcha. And I couldn't give a rat's ass about football right now. You yeah. know, like it's so, yeah. it's so right. funny. Yeah. I think, it, I think that has more to do with the way that my head works that I don't know if I could really say whether it's music that I'll, 20 years from now, I'll probably be pursuing, you know, stock brokerage with the same, Desperate zeal <laughs> that I'm writing Hang out songs. With this guy. Yeah, that stay guy's right. friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, But also, like you, you pursue are... that, like you pursue <laughs> songwriting, man. You're, Jackson, you're, you're so good at playing guitar that, like, you could also be a studio musician. You know what I mean? Like, I feel, and also just how you are, you know, obsessively. Yeah, on time for everything. Anything you do, you will do, and you will do yeah. it well. And I'll do it with my shirt tucked in. Yeah. Well, and you can. I mean, that's the thing. Like, in, when you get into it, like. There's, it's not just nothing and playing on the radio. Like there's all yeah, these different levels of successful careers totally. to be yeah. had, you know. Mm -hmm. And people only think of it. Oh, he's 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 writing his own stuff. Oh, he's gonna be on the radio. He's gonna, yeah, yeah. Like, you should you should go on American yeah, Idol. That's what you should. Oh this yeah. Be, oh god. Have you ever? Be, oh my god. Uh, non -stop. Why? I don't. My favorite is, want to do that. my favorite is when an audience member uh, comes up to you after the show and says that you sound like another artist that you sound nothing like. Oh man. What's okay? What's your guys's? What's the worst one you've got? Mm. Uh, the worst one wasn't towards me. It was today. Um, they told Lacey that she sounds like Janis Joplin. <laughs> I was right next to her. Like, and I was not, like, like I mean, that's so funny that's a because great, I mean, she's people Janice have told is amazing, me that I like, sound like Alison Krauss. I, I just, I right? didn't like, kind of a see it. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. Can y'all hear me talking right now? Tell me, <laughs> tell me yeah. right now in my and speaking voice. Maybe to their, you know, professional ears, they can hear nuances that I can't. I've <laughs> got to attribute it to that. I don't know. But I was just like, that, wow, not what, not the name I thought was coming out of that guy's right. mouth. Yeah. Oh, Lacey. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know how she took it. Maybe she thought it, maybe she I mean, was probably, like, oh, okay. worse uh, things. If there's any musicians listening to this um <laughs> If you need a female vocalist on any of your tracks, <laughs> do not call me. I won't do it. Call Lacey. She is phenomenal. I like professional. Do you have a, you, do you have a phone number? Just, oh, we should just like put yeah. it on here. No, we can't. Yeah, do let that. me put she Lacey's like, phone number it, for anyone to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've so someone told me once that 
they said, well, you kind of sound like like John Prine. And this was when I was starting on early on. But then, like, so as you're like, <laughs> well, yeah. I was like, oh, thanks, that's a huge compliment, you know. And but then it was, I got to thinking, I'm like. <laughs> John Prine young or John Prine <laughs> now? Because oh, dude's yeah. been through some surgery, yeah. and I st- I'll still go to his shows, yeah. and he still rocks it. I saw him play at Red Rocks a couple years ago, three hours straight, and really? danced off stage. Dude is a legend. That's awesome. It's like, but I mean, it's like, what does that? What does that mean? You know what I mean? When, right. especially when you go to a, someone that's been playing for 40, 50 years, it's like you, you're. Got yeah, a pretty he's broad drawn. window to compare someone to, you know? Yeah. Anyone can sound like John Prine in that yeah. aspect. Like, Are what you year? young Johnny Cash you or know? blind, diabetic, <laughs> right. deathbed Johnny Cash? Yeah, I don't know. What about you? What, who have you been compared to? I keep getting Lyle Lovett. I heard Ooh. that today. Which, yeah, I mean, From, again, someone said about worse, you. that's fine. I'll take it. Uh, I was getting that, though, years ago, even before I knew who Lyle Lovett was. People were saying that. Dude, he's... Which I don't get. I don't quite have the hair to be Lyle Lovett, I don't think. Yeah, you have to get a perm yeah, you know, or something yeah. like that, man. If he shows up with a perm next year, I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah. oh, check it out. Yeah. He just <laughs> leaned into that curve, man. He's taking it. Yeah. I mean, I... Because your style is so different. But if you in the highway heathens... Mm. I'm Sorry. Highway Patrol. That's the name of his band. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying That's to be funny. I know, like, we're, throwing him, we're throwing him yeah. off the scent. <laughs> Nobody's um, ever going to find us. If you did do a Lyle Lovett song, I'm sure you do well, but also you just do well in whatever song right. you did. So. Thank you. Because uh, the first night I ever saw you, you covered Super 8 Motel. That's by right. Jason Isbell. You did? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, used, we used to do that all the time. I've only heard one <laughs> other person cover that, and my buddy Guth, and um, of course he can't screw up whenever he touches a guitar but like i that's something i've never even come close to i don't i really do. oh, it's a, i just couldn't it's even it's a fun uh, that's a good one we pull off i'm gonna toot my own did horn. you have a full band though right like yeah electric well four piece yeah okay oh two my guitars God. bass and drum hey rosalita yeah we pulled off rosalita oh jeez oh, that, that was, was a tall order that was the same night you guys closed with that song yeah. and it was the first time i'd ever heard anyone cover it let alone like Nail all that the was a tall, yeah, changes. all the changes, yeah. Holy and shit. you had a sax player with you that night, yeah, yeah, for Jeez. that one song, Lana Ritzel of Missoula, Montana. Terrific, wow, terrific horn you, player. You told me the story about her playing with you, yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my god, yeah, oh man, she, Lana's a phenomenal sax player. We were actually briefly in the jazz saxophone studio at UM together for a little while, and we we, get, we got our little goofy rockabilly band down in my basement, and we we've all learned this. Bruce Springsteen song and she's like shredding over it like just crazy and we, we were all kind of like hey that sounds really good but could you play like a whole note on a D and then a whole note on a D an octave lower like which is you remember it's all it is it's <laughs> yeah. like two whole notes and, and she so nailed tasty, it and, and you the, love it but like she could have done something yeah, I mean, she was, so intricate she was crazy and, and then she played you know these two just, whole notes yeah, and the four of notes. us were like yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome that's the song. <laughs> yeah, that was, but that was, I mean, talk about just the amount of work that it was to keep that song together, like mm-hmm. the amount of rehearsal time we spent on Rosalita Come Out Tonight compared to one time it really killed that night. We should have let it go after that because one night we like played the Murray. Oh, I was until, there that night too. Until closing time and it's like 1.30 in the morning and everyone's <laughs> left the bar. Yeah. And, and we, had, with we had written on the set list that we were going to close with Rosalita and we, there's like two people in the bar and we're looking at each Me other like and Quinn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like are we about to play an 8 minute rendition of Rosalita uh, with like claps and like oh sing along shit gosh. and we did this extensive and then we kind of all walked off stage and we're like yeah, I mean you nailed it. We're not doing that again. Shouldn't, we're not doing that shouldn't, anymore. Shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> That's it was good while it lasted. Uh do you um uh so one of the things that I like to ask people is what's your covers you hate to get requested i feel like mama tried is in the 90 percentile so you you appreciate it's getting requested but it's like okay well uh, he plays it i love that song yeah. that's a great song like songs i don't play anymore from when i first started uh you know wagon wheel yeah. uh um country roads yeah i don't play that anymore uh there's uh, uh a few tom petty songs i don't play anymore any, like yeah. you don't know how it feels like yeah. it's like ah, i yeah. played play that one a lot we we have a we have a one cover policy or a one request policy, because uh, I, I mean, and only if it's already in the set. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we, we, we want we winged we wung some stuff. We have winged 
We've done some, we've done some stuff wanged. on the fly. Wanged. It's winged. You know, I'm not an asshole. People, and we're like a bar band. We play like dance halls where people yeah. are just out drinking. Like we, because we don't have to promote that because we're just the house right. band, which is what I like about those gigs. It's great. It's great. Um, and you know, I mean, shit. People have to have a good time. We will usually play one request, but then. If you give them an inch, they'll take you a mile. I mean, you could play somebody's request, and then at the end of their request, they'll be back up at the stage requesting the next song, yeah. and it's like, all right. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. tell them that at least jukeboxes get paid. <laughs> yeah. The, the, when, they, when they come up with requests and they don't like have a tip or anything for you, they just yeah. say, hey, play this song. And my yeah. favorite is when they try to request something, but they don't even know what they're trying to request. Yeah, play uh, that play one a, that goes... That, you know, it's a da, 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 yeah, da, da, da. that's too. Or they just holler out an artist, Garth Brooks. Yeah, like, what? We, it's nice. <laughs> I mean, it sucks. And we all know female, what song yeah. they want when you say Garth Brooks. Yeah. you know, it's one song they want to hear. But it sucks being a female musician for a ton of reasons. Um, <laughs> but one of the nice things is like, very rarely do I get asked to cover. Uh, a song because most of the songs that all the guys at the bar that are going to request shit know is male songs. So they're not going to ask a female artist to like cover a male song, which is nice. But I'm going to request I'm George gonna, Strait yeah. every time I come in. You know what I mean? They're not going to ask me to play a Johnny Cash song, <laughs> right. obviously. Um, but you get Jolene like half a dozen times every night. I get Jolene all yeah. the fucking time. Oh, in, God. Especially when I'm with other male musicians who sing and play. Yeah. In spite of ourselves, every oh, fucking time. Oh, sure. Really? And like, oh, yeah, great song, one. cool. But like, don't make me hate it. Yeah. 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 I like it. Don't make me play it so many times that I hate it. I don't even want to do it. Just. <sighs> well, you can't. I mean, can you even have a woman sing Folsom Prison? Is that is that a thing? Is that I possible, I right now? Uh, I don't know. I'm in a. I play upright bass in a band that, that covers that happen. song, and I feel like I do it better than the lead singer. <laughs> um. It's, I'm sorry. You're right. You're absolutely I'm right. Sorry, like that Addie. happens. That's a thing. Like it's like the people have their their lanes or alleys that they just yeah. kind of view the world in, and that's oh, you know, I'm not going to go request Alan Jackson to Raina Wallace. Like why yeah. would I do that? You know, you know. I mean, I wouldn't personally play Folsom Prison Blues though in my band because I've just heard it too many times. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. And if I was going to play it in a band, it'd have to be my th- shitty three-piece all-female punk band, and we just beat the shit out of our instruments and just scream it. Like, that's the only yeah. way I'm going to do that song. But in my country bands, like, no. So, a few years back, I used to market myself as Heath Johnson 100% not the radio. <laughs> it's like, I'm, oh, if it's good. on the radio, I'm not playing it. And a few people were like, how's, how's that going for you, man? I'm like, well, it's, it's tough, but people that are actually listening they dig it because you know someone they either know like yeah. stuff like prying and everything like that they i love they that this podcast them. is now just a psa We're for just, non-musicians just yeah. like bitching for a bit yeah. but, but I, I f- yeah right. no i, I mean I it was that like, thing yeah i feel like the line is pretty fine and i feel like the bar is fairly low and you can <laughs> the bar is so low <laughs> you can i mean i feel like it's not that hard i mean i feel like it's not that hard to do it well like I mean, my band's like a country blues band, but just doing, doing Big River instead of Folsom Prison Blues. Yep. Doing Storm, do Stormy Skin. Monday. Do, yeah. do Stormy time. Monday instead of Texas Flood. I did like, blues. Your it's Mule Skin little, Blues you can, instead of Jolie. Right. Yeah. You can be a little bit smarter, and then yep. people. Like, yeah, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's a little bit more. Like make them think for a it's second. It's maybe like, not oh. the first song off the list. You like, know? Oh yeah, they have more than that one yeah. song. That artist. Right. It has multiple yeah. albums that I can ask them to play. Yeah, yeah Jolene's not a deep cut. <laughs> not, a, not a Dolly Parton Name another cut. Dolly Parton song. Yeah, uh, just... Yeah, you should just... If you can name me one other Dolly Parton song, then maybe I'll oh play it. Oh, my God. It. There was one time I was busking in Bozeman, like, years ago. I was 18. I just moved to Montana, and uh, I did not know the Bozeman demographic. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners don't know. <laughs> um, think about Tiva sandals and a Patagonia jacket. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's basically Bozeman as a whole. And I was busking and some Starbucks in their hand. Like, or? no, that okay. that's bad for the environment. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, he's like, college kids come up to me and ask me to play something that they know. I'm like, okay, yeah, like like what? And, of course, they didn't even know what they knew. 
And so I was like, mm-hmm. oh, like some Bob Dylan. They're like, yeah, we love Bob Dylan. I was like, oh, what's your favorite Bob Dylan song? And like, I swear to God, like their uh, faces just went completely blowing blade. in the wind. Like, All they, the they could falls. not name a single Bob Dylan song for me to play. Uh, it's like we're, we're we're supposed to like Bob Dylan, so yeah. we just do because yeah. we've weed, heard that man, name. You know, you, know? you smoke weed, so it's cool. Yeah. I, I, his poster's up in my dorm room. Yeah. You know, I got it up it's there. A Dave Matthews Band poster. Yeah. It's like seven artists that you're just. That you just place. assume you like. And I bet Bob. if any of them listened to it, they probably wouldn't like Bob Dylan because a lot of people don't. No. The dude is very. Pretty esoteric. You either like him or you don't, yeah, man. You know? A, he is an acquired taste in a yeah. lot of ways. I mean, there is a, a third option. You, you like. Uh, his songs that other people do. Ah, sure. My boyfriend he, is like that. I personally actually like him. I think his uh, voice is pretty incredible. But Quinn always tells this joke like, hey, did you hear that Bob Dylan's getting back together? <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's he's been covered a lot, too. That's, yeah. that's a true thing. I don't know. It's We do it because it's, it's who we are, you know, and it's... Because we're... Fucking masochist? Uh, some. I fell into it. Well, I fell into it after two divorces. So, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, masochist. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start writing out my pain for a while and see what happens from it. And, um, yeah. And then it just turns out it was something I enjoyed and something other people enjoyed. So I just kept doing it and then started finding people like you guys that are just like, get easily, you know, overlooked from, big wigs and that and everything and you've get but you've got skill and you've got talent and it's like people people should know that there's multiple people right around our region that are just beyond skilled yeah, yeah, you know people working at a high level I mean, yeah. the other thing that jackson and i have in common is just We've made- brutal honesty <laughs> and a lot of people cannot handle that yeah I, I can see that. It's I mean, it's hard for me to handle sometimes. Like if if I'm, you know, yeah. getting into a genuine conversation with someone that's brutally honest, because I'm, I'm one of those people that if someone's like being brutally honest with me and it's something that I did wrong, oh, like okay. I just flat out go, like just take it. Like yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That was yep. You're right. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of overly become agreeable. Right. <laughs> just become the whipping boy. And take it's it. like, you're so right about me. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm not talking like that. I'm not just like No, I'm just I'm just using yeah. that as an example, but yeah. No, because there's been some times this weekend where we've almost got into some yeah, shit. It's been, yeah. Like there's been some behavior. Telling that kid last night that <laughs> he just writes rap songs for people who are scared of black people and and yeah, he did what you do. He's just like Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and it's almost like it's not a like you like you like you don't want to start a fight, so you just don't attack back. I mean, I was tuned up, so yeah. I was waiting <laughs> yeah. for a, a, a reaction. For I'm not like this. I'm not like that when I am sober. But see, a lot of it for me now. is I don't really care in the end. Yeah. So like, I'll just take it at the time and just I just I just let's get this conversation over and I'll find a conversation well, that just I like enjoy. Some you know? some like <laughs> stupid bullshit that is we just can't tolerate. Jackson almost got in a fight at the bar today while I was eating a burger somewhere else, and I was so pissed. And I'm like, you're not going to be more punk rock than me this weekend. You this can't get in a fight without me. This is why she keeps you close, me. man. Right, so I don't do anything too, too cool. I'm the wild card gonna... here. Come right. on. Yeah. That would that's actually incredible. be pretty awesome. Like, no, it was, it's, it's Jackson that's in jail tonight. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Raina's going to be in church. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old pastor heathen. Oh, jeez. I've... <laughs> I had I had a I had a group for a while that was called Beer and Bible. We would drink beer and we'd we'd go through a Bible study and it got up to forty people in Spearfish, South Dakota, and it was pretty great. That's wild. And uh, that's but I, I hate I hate religion, so that's probably why it, it actually worked because <laughs> if you take religion out of anything, it gets ultimately better. You know what I mean? uh, there's this Hasidic Jew I know, um, and he's from New York, and you can't tell whether he's in his thirties or his fifties. Yeah. And my boyfriend cuts his hair. Because there's like a special, like parameters in which you got to. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he told a joke one time. He goes, "At my bar mitzvah, my father told me, my father was an atheist. I'm an atheist, and with God's help, you'll be an atheist too." <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's good. God, that guy's so funny. Do you? Um, so I know you've got you've got stuff on Spotify. Like yeah. that's where I yeah, where listen to your stuff where mm-hmm. you came down and. Um, 
I don't. Do you have you recorded anything, Raina? Yeah, um, I tried to do it like the professional route with backing musicians, and it just wasn't. Um, it didn't really encompass the sound. And, yeah, and the feeling. How would that you even I, capture that? Um, well, I'm going to capture it in a basement this winter. Mm. So, okay. good luck. Get ready for that. <laughs> it's uh, lo-fi. Like just a, do it right. Just disappear for a while and yeah, yeah. like Jackson needs a tour with you know James McMurtry I'm I'm more of yeah. like the opener for Lost Dog Street Band mm. like, yeah that was, that was a weird no fit. no leashes no masters <laughs> uh, um so we were we were making fun of social media but do you guys have Facebook music pages and stuff like Instagram oh, and yeah, everything yeah, like that yeah. and um, I am most active on Instagram because I don't, I don't really like to go on Facebook that much cause it's just my, I'll post something and the only person that likes and comments on it is my grandmother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so, well, as soon as grandmother's got into Facebook, a, man, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, It's kind of dead. It's your grandma's I, game now. Yeah. I yeah. feel like allows for a lot more traffic and like, it's cool to like someone, you know, follow someone that you don't personally know, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's a lot more fluid. And I'm much more active on there. It, it's it's one. It's like so. I got up. I don't know. I was at like 900 something, and I started going through it. My the friends there, and I didn't know any of them. They're just all connections I made through playing music. Yeah. That, you know. And then finally, I just got sick of it, yeah. so I deleted it's them so, all. It's weird. So many people got pissed. Really? Why aren't we friends anymore? I'm like, oh, Jesus. whoa! Like we are. Like uh, we're just not. Like, yeah. Chill out, man. Yeah. Like, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my they friend Solly personal. is like the nicest dude. He was a drummer for Nikki Lane for a while and Coulter Wall, and he is so nice and loves making friends so much that he literally reached the maximum amount of friends you can have on Facebook. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I was like, there's That's, a max. I didn't know there's there were rules. Yeah, yeah he, I didn't know that. So Instagram, mine's calamity dot rain. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we. We are also, we're on uh, Facebook and we're on Instagram as uh, Highway Patrol Rock and Roll. But this is a, an apt time. Uh, I need to make a public service announcement that I do not manage the Instagram account. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, my guitar player, our guitar player, Rainus Drummer, uh, the illustrious Tyson Gerhardt of Livingston, Montana, coordinates our Instagram account. And he's gotten, he's gotten some, uh, some personal messages via Instagram like, hey, are you going to be around this weekend? Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, loved your set last night. And, he, <laughs> and it's not me. It's not it's not Jackson Holty. Like, that, that's not it's Tyson's Instagram account. I'm gonna wait like a month and a half and just start sending messages hey, like that right hey. to you. Are you busy after the show? What are you up to? <laughs> Well, that's nice because yeah. I didn't even know that. Now I know that, like, it's not, if I feel like Tyson's oh, ignoring me, I'll just message him through High Up Patrol yeah. Rock. Uh oh. Yeah. This ruined it. I mean, He's I know like, where he ah. lives. I'll just go to his house. Or, or, or yeah, call anywhere. his mom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fucking Tyson. Yeah. But I don't know. When, like, when I'm, like, on your Instagram right now, I don't really see much for, like, music promotion on there. It's just, you know, your it's stuff. Just me it's just you insane. and your. Is it your clothing line? That Did you design clothes? No, or? I worked for a clothing line. Um, I don't anymore. Okay, okay, gotcha. But I still buy things from them. <laughs> yeah. I tried to, so at one point I thought, well, maybe I should make multiple accounts from personal, music, and then, you know, podcast. You know, like, you know what? No. It's like, so... I yeah. am I am all of that stuff, so if you, if yeah. you follow me, you're going to get me riding my bicycle down, down a canyon, you know, because yeah. I like to ride my bike. And you're going to get the podcast, you're going to get... Well, not music anymore because I just don't want to do it. And like, yeah, yeah, find me, you know. But yeah, yeah it's a t- it's it's tough to manage because it's really, you know, like our band account is our personal lives, and my personal account, I haven't. Yeah, I no longer feel any compulsion to tell people where I'm celebrating Christmas this year. Right. It's all. Yeah. It's just a constant stream of here's where I mean, my I band's feel like playing. I can manage someone else's band better than my own. It is. Yeah, you have to divorce yourself from like. Yeah. Well, y- y- it takes so much time, you know, and so if it's some, that's why, I mean, people make careers out of doing that, you yeah. know, and props to them, you know, I've thought about hiring someone, but I just, I don't want to spend the money to do that, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, no. yeah, but yeah. One of the bands I'm in, Al Thompson and the Honky Tonk Heathens play upright bass for them, and that kid, he's like my little brother, and 
he can fucking manage. Yeah. Yeah. He's really yeah like relentless. to the point where it was like hurting my feelings for a little bit. I'm like, he's doing all this cool shit. Why the fuck am I? And they're like, oh, because you don't pay money to have a booking agent or mm, a manager yeah, because yeah. you don't move down south to be closer to bigger cities and more yeah, music industry. That's part of you the masochist part. Like we you write don't songs tour relentlessly. You don't play a bunch of covers yeah. in order to play three hour bar sets. Like yeah. I don't do any of those things. And then it's like, of course Al Thompson's going to be more popular because he's putting all his fucking work in and yep. you're watching Star Trek <laughs> Deep Space Nine in your underwear. Don't knock Star Trek. I grew up on it. I'm yeah, a big fan. I'm a big fan. That's true, though. I mean, most songwriters move to music hubs and disappear, you know? And yeah. I, I don't... I, I've, I've got this long-term vision and maybe it's just a pipe dream, but of just like the Black Hills area or somewhere in this region becoming like a music hub, you know, and the more people I meet around this area, it's like it easily can be, you know, just got to find someone willing to invest the time and effort to it because it's a culture change. You know, you got to convince businesses in the area that music is something you should invest in. You know, yeah. you should have musicians every night of the week, not just Fridays and Saturdays, you mm -hmm. know, and watch watch how that changes your entire culture. But yeah, uh, but yeah well, we, we write songs and we we play and we, we stay happy and. We, we don't we don't <laughs> move to places where if anyone is in the back smoking room smoking their cigar that's not doing the work would actually bump into us and yeah. that's that's okay. I'm I'm fine with it, you know. Happy, healthy. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, it's I a good, do it all the time. I feel like it's a good deal here, you know. I don't We've we've had some conversations amongst the highway patrol cuz the older we get, the tougher it gets to keep that band together. People's lives kind of go in different directions and I don't my life's pretty good here. My straight job's pretty good. I, I don't really envy any of these fellas who are here from Nashville this weekend. Yeah. I'm not sure that, you know, just because, uh, and I don't know, I don't know their lives or what they're like. And I'm, you know, 10 year rule, they believe in what they're doing, but mm -hmm. well, I remember uh, when it, it just seems like such a rat race. Yeah. I've, I like it here. I don't want to go anywhere else. When it really yeah. clicked for me was talking to my friend Alex Muniz, who's a phenomenal lead guitarist and has been in a couple big name acts and he told me one time he's like that's so cool that you live in montana what you work with horses you make west right clothes. yeah like this is you out houses yeah like outside you, of people's you lives. live on a ranch like that's exactly what uh, i want to do someday yeah. and i'm like has no one told you that you play lead guitar <laughs> yeah <laughs> like for yeah. nikki lane uh, yeah that's when i met him was he, that's who he was working with at the time like he'd helped produce Margot Price's last mm -hmm. album and all those kinds of shit. I was like, that's what I want to do. Like, yeah. but you want to be in Montana. And so that's when it clicked with me. Like, yeah. as long as you're happy, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to keep chasing this dream because you're going to run yourself out. Well, and there's different goals. I was talking yeah. to someone that like, it's just, it's different. Uh, who was I talking to? Oh, I was talking to Cor Blund. Yeah. Um, and he was telling me like, it's just, there's different goals that people have in music. And a lot of those people in Nashville, that's, that's their goal. That's what they want. They want to be that songwriter in those think tanks, in those rooms, mm -hmm. just cranking them out, you know? And Which is, he's like, it's good. He's like, and he said, that's just not what I want to do. Yeah. Like, I want to do this, and so I am. And yeah, it's a big industry, and there's more niches than people yeah, realize. Absolutely. You can have, you know, I and mean, what the hell, it's pretty fun playing the union club once a month. Yeah. Like, that's a good niche. <laughs> yeah. Know, it's not like that's a bad deal. Yeah, and, but there's, and there's room enough for it, you know? So yeah. it's that kind of thing where I... It's not my cup of tea, and some of it really annoys the shit out of me. But okay, so there's something that I don't. I gotta. St I don't know. People always get in those comparisons, and I I was guilty of it for a long time. And I just kind of, yeah. kind of stopped. I'm like, I if I don't care about it enough to, yeah. then I don't care about it enough to you, bitch about it either. Yeah. Like he wants done. to pursue it just like as a really fun practical joke. Do it for like two years and yeah, just... yeah, just like. <laughs> get like reach a level of fame and fortune that's like oh cool socially engineered this, this sucks fan base and, like, and leave i'm done but you know i also don't want to have to spend any time away from my my dogs my partner and just yeah. completely throw every other aspect of my personality and my life away in order to achieve a really funny practical joke mm -hmm. so i feel like in this and in like we were talking earlier about would you ever quit i feel like what you want 
what you want to do sort of manifests itself in your life, you know, like we, none of us have to do this. Right. You know? Right. And you know, people ham and haw over, should I go to Nashville? Should I go to Austin? And, and yet somehow you wake up every morning and put your pants on and go, yeah, go do what, go do the best you can. And, and here we are, you know, Saddle like up those mules, if huh? you really wanted to be in Austin, you'd probably be there by now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you wouldn't like, be hanging true. around here. No uh, one's stopping you. you right. Know? Yeah. There's not like a wall. Yeah. Yet, yeah. Uh, I I feel like it's worth <coughs> saying it, it, on my end of this conversation that I I came out here from Minnesota, moved I guess not even here, moved to the Northern Rockies twice again as far as we are from Minnesota here. Mm-hmm. Um, very much like the geography came before the music for me. Like I wanted to live there, and the music is still derivative of like I'm really I work really hard on like place based writing I'm, and like ingraining myself in the culture there and writing in such a way that is oh, not mean, only about... Oh, you mean you actually live in a rural area and write songs about living in a rural right. area? Right, and not not only That's that are... That's insane. Right, not just that are about rural places, it's but that are talk. believable to those rural people. Like, yeah, yeah. I've been spending six or seven years learning how to speak in the vernacular of those people, and it, I feel like... I, I would be a novelty in Nashville. I would be like that guy who sings songs about horses. You also, know? It would you be guys, like, who the hell is this You guys can't kid? see this right now, but Jackson has a um, cast. It's a splint, we'll call it. A splint it. on yeah, his wrist. Yeah. Would you like to explain why you have a splint on your wrist? Not really, but it seems like the thing to do. Uh, I, I opened up an old fracture about two weeks ago, uh, pulling shoes off of horses. Uh, because it's, I just hit the end of my season. I'm a seasonal, um, I'm actually the wilderness ranger out of Lincoln. I run mule strings uh, in the wilderness. No uh, shit. All, all summer, yeah. And we huh. just hit, October hit, I went and, it was supposed to be done. This was supposed to be the end of the line. I went, got all the horses pulling shoes off, and I fucking broke my wrists, and uh, I'm going to be dealing with that all winter. Jeez, man. Yeah, but that's, but that's, this, You're is, right, yeah. this is what I say, like, my straight job is good. I like living here. I like writing yeah. about this, like, I mean, this summer was one of the best of my life because I worked 40 hours a week running mule strings in the wilderness and then would come out on the weekends and play shows in the towns, like in the rural communities where I lived. And like, that's, holy cow, like, feels like I, I got it. I feel like the richest man alive. Like, that's, yeah. you know, it's, it's trite to be like, this is my dream. I'm living the dream. <laughs> but like, like well, wow, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't have been, <laughs> I couldn't have imagined that this, would be the deal you know like yeah it's that this was a great summer I really well and when it. you find a vein of success whatever that success may be like r- write it you know it's yeah. just write it you know who's to say that this isn't the, the beginning origin stories of 20 years down the road and yeah like this you know, is like, yeah oh, you're you know? always looking at your google yeah, calendar six months down the line yeah it's like this is it this is what we're doing yeah, and if you just jump ship and like move somewhere else, and you gotta start all over, and you're a small fish in a really yeah, big pond, definitely, you know what I mean? yeah. Like, uh, yeah. At least you can. I don't know. I, I feel like that's. I, I moved here from Omaha. Before that, I grew up in a small town of a hundred people in Western Nebraska, and uh, um, but the music scene in Omaha is is big. I've heard really good things. Yeah, about it's it. they got a really good underground I music did not scene. Know that. I would not have yeah. that. <laughs> wouldn't have guessed. You do really yeah. good in Omaha. Um, really? Yeah. And uh, But it was one of those things where it's like, I I don't think I would have done as well as I have up here. But part of it, too, is I, w- I got around people up here that were willing to hang out with me and teach me things and help me grow and yeah. think through things better. And then, um, you know, and that helps, too, where th- in, when you're in a city and stuff like that, it's, it's cutthroat. It's if you get a gig... I don't get that gig. You yeah, know? So they won't, they, you know, and here it's like there's enough to go around still. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. We, I mean, we've been talking all weekend at this terrific Wild West songwriter festival that Heath hosts, uh, helps to organize, um, about just the way that a rising ship carries all tide. The rising tide raises all ships. Christ Jesus, alive. <laughs> a rising... Rising tide. A rising truck drives down the <laughs> sky. Uh, yeah, and I've, I mean... It's kind of always, I've always Jason been Jason Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> I've always been kind of intrigued by the way that you know all these blues musicians came from the same plantation. I forget what it's called down in Mississippi or like mm-hmm. you know Guy and Towns or John Prine and Steve Goodman or, or like yeah. nobody's just there's no mad geniuses in their basements like yeah. It always you have to have people to bounce ideas off of and people to work with. Well the hardest yeah. part is like 
just really genuinely enjoying like your music and your music and Lacey's music and I can't hide my emotions. Yeah. I'm incapable. So like when I talk about you guys, I am like just beside myself. I fucking love these guys <laughs> and they're so good and I get to share the stage with them. And well, people think that like when I'm talking up other musicians, yeah. they're immediately like well, you're good too. <laughs> you sing good too. Yeah, and it's and I'm not. Like, a... I'm not knocking my son. Right. By like, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, but now you're making me think that maybe I should be like a little more skeptical of yeah. myself. Oh, yeah. sweetie, you're just as good as them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so. Uh, no, I do though. I've, I, I like that's why I was part of why I was asking when you guys are gonna record that because I find myself all the time kicking on music from people that I know because because you like. Uh, I Isn't love that those great? Songs. Like I have, I've put, I put Kenny Fiedler's album in my car. It has not left. It's, it's on repeat every time I'm in the car. It's, it's. That's been Kenny. Quinn said it really good to me. My my partner, because especially being a woman in the industry, back when I was really dead set on being a really good musician and playing yeah. out all the time, being the one on stage, um, I had a boyfriend and I asked him repeatedly. I was like do you actually think I'm a good musician or do you just like to sleep with me? Uh, and he never gave me a straight answer. Ooh. Yeah, like, yikes, right? Cringe. Um, and so I asked Quinn that when we had first got together. And he just looked me dead in the eyes like, I could not be with you if I did not like your music. <laughs> I couldn't stand I could, you I if you were a bad musician. I couldn't sustain a relationship with someone that I had to lie to every single day. Oh, like, that, yeah, yeah they, that's a really good yeah. song. That's a, that's a pretty yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, super proud of you. Um, so it's nice to also have friends that like I don't have to lie to. Well, and it's the thing too, <laughs> you know? like yeah. being like in that type of situation. It's like, say you guys break up. It's like. Would he still listen to your music? If he likes it, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, maybe you know it's, memories and stuff. But well, you know, <laughs> maybe, luckily, maybe not all the time necessarily. Maybe not the newer stuff because yeah. he knows they're all going to be about him. Yeah. But yeah. Like, no, luckily, um, one, I try my hardest not to write heartbreak songs or love songs. I guess yeah. Big Empty House, and that's why it's a fucking hit. Apparently, well, people, um, love is a strong yeah. emotion. Um, people identify with it. Yeah. Good Mostly that song is about like what's the point in having nice things if you don't have yeah. you know f- right. yeah, it's a great someone tune. to share it with, friends or you know, partners, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just am lucky enough that I found someone that is as crazy as me. And so we've been talking about getting married. But either like Ooh. either like not telling anyone yeah. and going to the courthouse and just like signing a paper oh, and sure. just like total like discreet no one like knows. no one knows. Yeah. Or Having like a huge wedding, inviting all of our friends, partying our faces off, but never actually signing huh. a certificate. So we're like debating which way One to go with that. I... We'll probably go the the way that doesn't involve the government and involves the most partying. So yeah, but yeah. The last I was updated on the situation, you guys were planning on getting engaged at every show. So that people think oh, it's yeah, like the that most. That's when we were on tour, we thought about just like having a fake ring, and then at every show in every town right. across America. No one you know, knows. That we I was there again. the so, night yeah, that Rain and Quinn like, got yeah. engaged. <laughs> you can just follow the train of their path. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh look, there's yeah. here's all the posts that came that night. Yeah. And this Everyone's night. like, oh my god, it was so cute. There was a couple from Montana that toured through, engaged. and they got engaged it's like in a- our town on our stage mm-hmm. at our bar, right. and then like go on Instagram a couple days later and be like, oh, they just got engaged in Houston too. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's on the set yeah. list. I feel like after the sixth song, happen. Quinn's going to pop the question. I mean, maybe someday we'll be like at Red Ant's Pants and like uh, a band that we really like will be playing and I'll just like ask, or like I'll have Quinn ask like, hey, I really want to propose to my girlfriend. Can I do it on stage during your set? Just so we could like party with them afterwards. Like, right, see, we're, that's another good play. We don't need and to then take married, them for a carriage ride afterwards. it's hilarious right? to be in a relationship People with someone that. where we can do this shit. Plus, you know it's I mean? great yeah. viral marketing. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. word's gonna get out. Yeah. Is it genius or stupid? Oh my you know? gosh, that's funny. That's, that's funny. Well, if you do that, I know a few places down here that you should have one of your... It wouldn't be a fake engagement. They'd all be real engagements. Yeah, yeah. Just, you could There's just no fraud happening here. It's, like it's, it's a real thing. It's yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's right. 
This has been great, guys. Yeah. This yeah, has been this cool. Has been fun. Thanks. Uh, do, you, do you have anything to add, Jackson? Yeah. Any final up? thoughts? From, just off the top of my like. Yeah. To whatever's wrap, right now. You're asking me to man. really succinctly just conclude everything we've talked about. Yeah. <laughs> it's a concerted effort. Uh, Why do you think we left it to you? Uh. <laughs> uh, really, if there's by the time this comes out, it'll be too late. But if anything needs to be known, it's that uh, Raina and I are not dating. I just don't know anyone else. I just don't know anyone else in Deadwood, South Dakota. I'm just following Raina around like a puppy dog. Guys and girls can't be friends without them dating. That's no, the thing. Can't be done. You know. Well, shit. Maybe like we should just get fake. We should engaged. get engaged tonight. Oh my gosh. Is what I'm hearing. Like yeah. I'll still Actual go home to fake Quinn. engagement. Yeah. And yeah. Go up to the doing the at the doing Wild the VIP West lounge. Yeah. after hours jam. Doing the VIP lounge. Yep. And then a week later, just get <laughs> re-engaged oh to Quinn. <laughs> they would. That would really yeah. follow up. We don't need to tell the story about last night's party. But if anything oh, could shit. outshine last night's oh, party, fuck. it would be an engagement proposal. <laughs> oh, it's good. Do you have any, you know, final thoughts from Raina? We're good. That I feel like that's a good. I do good want to reiterate, to... Jackson and I are not dating. Not yeah. dating. We're not. One we're more just time, friends. they are so, not dating. So folks. platonic. We are they just, just both from Montana. Both from Montana. Like we don't even have not, that much in common. Not we're everyone. Not even, like friends. Not really. everyone in Montana is sleeping with each other. Right. Yeah. Only most. Of them. And I just wanted to talk with both of them, and it worked out that actually we could everyone do it. in Montana is sleeping together. All two of them. Oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of people there. Well, just kidding. Got to stay warm somehow. But this yeah. has been good. We we got we've been the Montana delegation though this weekend. It's yeah. been fun. People keep, people keep it's asking us why we're in the local rounds. Yeah, it yeah. is. It does feel weird yeah. being in the local yeah. round. Yeah, like, I just been telling uh, people came a long like, way. well, we're local. We're from West Dakota. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's more of a regional. We should maybe change that to regional. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, like, technically, I works. guess Saskatchewan would be lumped in there. Some, you know, it's close, yeah, close <laughs> something. To like, how far? Re- how far do you want to go for the region? But yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging at the Heath Bar. This was fun. Thanks for having us. Thank you, dude. That's it for this episode of the Heath Bar, folks. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I hope you enjoyed Jackson and Reyna. They are some of my favorite people. Um, I know about six people from Montana. Um, and yeah, they're up there on the top of the list. Anyway, if you want to get in touch with me for any reason, shoot me an email, heath at heathbaronline.com. Uh, check their stuff out as well, folks. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>